So it is a beautiful September 11th here on the farm. And that means fall is literally 10 days away for us. Or wait, no, for everybody. Uh, yeah, fall starts September 21st for everybody. But it's also our last, our first frost date on average. So that's why I got that mixed up. But I love this time of year. It's one of my favorite times of year because mostly what we're doing here on the farm is just harvesting and just kind of finishing out all of the planning that I did in the spring and uh, July. Um, so we're just kind of enjoying the fruits of our labor pretty much. It's not exactly that simple because I'm also planting for winter and that's a little bit stressful, but everything out here in the field is pretty much done and we just get to enjoy it and uh, harvest every week. I'm in the middle of our onion patch right now, which we're going to start picking in a week or two and it's looking like a great crop. And so it's one of my favorite times of year because it's, it's really enjoying the fruits of your labor. And um, what I'm going to talk about today is a bunch of fall crops that we planted months ago that we're going to start harvesting as we speak. Um, and it's cool because these crops are, were all planted after a spring crop. So we're getting two crops for the price of one. And I love farming like this because when you can grow food like this, you double your yield in the same space. And to me, that is such a game changing philosophy of gardening that I don't see enough people talking about. And, and there are a lot of people talking about it, but it's just, I don't think the average gardener is thinking about their garden like that. Um, and it does take some skill to get good at that. Um, but I'm going to go over some stuff today that will hopefully help you. And I'm going to go over nine examples of fall crops that we have in this field um, that you could do in your garden pretty easily. And I'm going to give you some planting tools to make it happen in your garden. And for those of you that don't know, I'm Zach Buckle. I am a market farmer in Cody, Wyoming. That's where we are right now. We're on my farm, which is a half an acre of actual growing space. Most of that's in greenhouses, but we are scheduled to hit $100,000 in sales this year. So we produce a lot of vegetables in a small space. And I'm really passionate about teaching people how to grow a lot of food in a small space. So that's pretty much what this whole video is about and what most of the videos on my channel are about. So if you find that interesting, hope you subscribe and like this video. Um, but you know, maybe wait till the end and see if you like me. Um, but yeah, so what I want to go over today are those crops and some seeding dates and examples of how you can make this happen in your garden. So hope you enjoy it and let's get into it. All right, so the easiest way to get two crops for the price of one in your garden is to grow your own starts. And by starts, I mean plants like this. Most of the stuff you see here is actually a winter crop for us. We're going to be planting it in a greenhouse, but it's literally the same concept as a fall garden. And most of these crops are great fall garden plants. So we got a lot of lettuce here. Um, that's a big winter crop for us. And a lot of bok choy. That's a really great um, winter crop for us as well. But the concept I'm talking about in this video is basically just getting a head start on whatever crop that you're planting in your garden, whether this is spring or fall, it's the same concept, but you literally shave 20 to 30 days off of your days to maturity on every crop that you plant as a transplant versus just throwing a seed in the ground. If I was going to plant this lettuce, with just a seed in the ground, it would take another month to mature and I wouldn't have enough time in my growing season to get a crop. So, and same with this kale. This is a winter kale crop. We're gonna plant this in the greenhouse tomorrow and hopefully it'll mature by uh, November. And that's how winter planting works, but 
for fall, we want to plant all crops in the field to mature by September 21st in my climate. That's our average first frost date. So with fall gardening, you want your crops to mature by the average first frost date in your climate. And that's something you have to figure out. I'm going to include Johnny's Seeds fall planting calendar in the description here of this video because that's exactly the tool that I use to plant for the fall on the farm. And it's exactly the same thing you'd use for your garden. You just plug in your average first frost date and it tells you when to seed all of the crops that you want as a fall crop. And it's gonna make more sense as I go over the crops in the field today. But that tool is exactly the tool that I use on the farm for fall planting. And it's perfect. Um, it's almost a guarantee that if you seed your crop on those dates, you will get a fall crop if you transplant it on time. Now I say almost a guarantee because there are no guarantees in gardening or farming. There is no guarantees, but it's as close as you're going to get. And it's a really easy way to eliminate a lot of the stress and overwhelm of doing this. But <clears throat> once you get used to using these seeding calendars, it becomes a lot less stressful. And all you're doing is when you have an open spot in your garden, you stick one of these plants in there and it's most likely going to mature by your first frost date. And you don't have to necessarily plan every single place that you're gonna put things. You just kinda go with the flow. When your first crop comes out, you put in your second crop because it's already seeded on time. And you could even put the plants in when they're a little younger if you wanna just get it in the ground and not worry about it because you know it's gonna mature. Like this bok choy here is a little bit under mature but I don't really care because I know that I'm going to start taking these tomatoes out on Friday of this week and we're going to put that in the ground and it will mature. So it doesn't even matter if the, the plants are fully grown or not. It helps, but the real key is seeding them on time and having a good place to start seeds. And that's something I go over in my garden course, which is in the link in the description. Um, Gardening 101 is my garden course where I explain how you can set up a nursery in your house to grow plants just like this with just simple LED lights and shelving units and stuff. You know, there's tons of videos on the internet about that anyway, if you wanna search it yourself it, that are free, but it's in my gardening course, which I lay out everything you need to know about starting a garden in your backyard from the setup to weeding, to watering, to seed starting dates, seeds to buy, all that stuff I go over in my gardening course. And I set up a in-house nursery where you could start all these kinds of plants and it just makes it so much easier to get two crops for the price of one. But if you get really good at this, you double your garden yields in the same space, no matter if your garden is 200 square feet or a thousand square feet. So this is the key to my farm making a lot of money in a small space, but it's also the key to you growing a lot of food in a small space in your backyard. So growing your own transplants is such a game changer. If you get good at this, you almost guaranteed will get good at growing your own food. So let's get into the crops. Okay, so what we have here is a bed of fall radishes. And these were following a bed of cilantro and dill, which is another, you know, we have that combination of first crop, second crop pretty often here on the farm, but fall radishes are great because when you plant radishes in the middle of the summer, a lot of times flea beetles will destroy them and they just don't grow right. They'll get all spindly and weird, but they grow way better as a shoulder season crop. They grow really well in the spring. So you'll notice we plant a lot of them in the spring and then starting around late August, we'll plant them a lot in the field because you'll notice these leaves are almost, they don't have any holes in them. There are very few. In the summer when you plant them, they'll be covered in holes and they'll be just destroyed. And there is insect netting you put on them, but it's so much work to do that. I don't like to do it with radishes. I only do it with a few crops. Um, 
and they just don't grow right. But there's very few holes in these right now because the flea beetles are starting to die down. I have no idea why that is, but they just don't, they don't do much starting late August or something. And these will be mature in about two weeks. So they'll be beautiful. Radishes can be take the tops can be taken off. You could store them in your fridge for three months. Um, they could take a little bit of a cold, but I don't like them pretty much below like 28 degrees. They're going to have some problems because they do get kind of weird. The texture changes a lot, um, but they're so fast. They're I talked about them in my last video as a quick crop, but you know if you have an arsenal of all those quick crops in your seed bank at home. Um, you got to have radishes in there because it's just a ton of food in a small space. Um, and they're very versatile. You don't just have to use them as a garnish on tacos or something. You could roast them with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Really great food source. These are French breakfast. That's my favorite. Um, sells the best. And, uh, you know, this bed should yield us about 100 to 150 bunches, which is basically you know, 60 to 75 pounds of radishes on a 50 foot bed. So it's really high yielder and you can let them get a lot bigger, but they get pithy. Um, but a great fall crop and just throw some seeds in the ground. We don't even do these as transplants because you don't need to. Radishes should be 21 to 30 days. Um, you really don't need to start them in a nursery for that. But you know, this is actually the third crop in this bed. I'm almost positive we had something before the cilantro and dill. I just don't even remember what it was. And again, we're just throwing this alfalfa meal in there every time, and it just keeps feeding the soil compost sometimes. And um, you're building soil and growing food at the same time. Great second crop. You didn't see that weed. Or that weed. Or that weed. So, this is a bed of green onions that we transplanted uh, around July 20th or something. And these were grown as uh, transplants. I think we started them basically a month before that, like June 20th or something, and threw them in the ground after a spring crop of radishes. And um, this bed actually has been a complete disaster for a couple years because of grass growing in and thistle and stuff and i really made a uh, herculean effort this spring to rip out as much thistle as possible and it seems to be working actually because i thought it'd be a lot worse but you could kind of see some of that thistle over there and um so i wanted to grow really quick crops in here to uh you know keep it from uh, the weeds from taking over but this is another great fall crop because this is another bomb proof one. I guarantee you could harvest this through December into December in most climates um, because it's super cold hardy. If you get it mature, you know, in about two weeks, this crop's definitely going to be mature. Some of these guys are almost ready. And I love green onions. You know, they're great as a garnish. I love to grill them with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Um, absolutely love green onions. And uh, they're a lot faster than regular onions, obviously, if you get the right variety. But, you no, know, another example of like a ton of food in a small space. I actually can probably fit a whole nother row of green onions on this same bed. I figured out this year. I'm still getting used to the whole paper pot transplanter thing. But you can do this in your garden, too. Each one of these little clumps of green onions, you could plant as a eight seeds or something in a sell flat late june and as long as you stick to that planting calendar that johnny's has they will mature by your la your first frost date so um and you keep them growing and healthy and stuff and you can even do it earlier you, you know one of the things i like to do is plant things a couple weeks before their date because in my climate and you might not want to do this for your climate to be honest but my climate, it is so cold at night. Everything grows slower all the time. You know, I just keep, every year I keep on expecting things to grow at the right days to maturity and they don't. And I think it's mostly because a combination of factors like my nursery is actually pretty crappy. If you set up your nursery like I talk about in the garden course, you're going to be better off because it's in your living room and it's way warmer. My nursery doesn't have any heat right now, so the plants grow way slower 
and they're not very big when I put them in the ground. So when you, if you plant big plants, they grow faster in general. You know, there's a little bit of a learning curve with that because if you have too big of plants, there are problems. But I like to do it a little earlier just in case because it takes so long and I'd rather have the plants be over mature than under mature by, by my first frost date. That's something you'll have to figure out for yourself. But, you know, green onions are a really great one because, again, they're so cold hardy. Once you get them mature, they're just, you know, you can do a 10 feet of green onions in your garden and just harvest two or three bunches a week from, like, October through, like, mid-December. You know, in most climates, that's going to work. You know, in my climate, we have negative 30 or negative 20 almost every winter. But that usually doesn't happen until like the absolute last couple of weeks in December or first weeks in January. So there's a huge window of time where it might get down to the teens plenty of times and that might damage a green onion a little bit. But for the most part, you could just rip off the like what, one of the things you could do with green onions is, you know, you'll have these little like um, brown bits on them. And that will happen when they get frost damage, but you can just rip those layers off, especially if they're really big green onions. You know, you, you got a lot more to work with there than you think. And the core of that green onion is going to be fine. So big one to, to try in your fall garden is green onions. Okay, so now we're in our fall celery crop beds. And uh, to be honest, I can't even tell when these were planted by looking at them anymore because they almost are the same size and i think there's a couple different reasons for that but the uh i know that one of them was planted june 12th one was planted june 28th and the june 28th one was uh followed it's following a crop of arugula that we planted in the spring so we had arugula in here that's a really common one that will we grow that all the time on the farm um, you know, but you could do the same thing at home. You could grow a little bit of arugula or some quick growing green, and then it'll, it'll be ready in like 30 days or something. You harvest it once or twice, and then you could rip it out and replant it to something like this. And the celery is one of the trickiest ones to do as a fall crop, because you really got to be religious about that seed starting date. These were started in March. And I, well, the way I do celery is I pretty much plant it every week starting March 1st, even February 15th. Because my nursery sucks, um, I like to do it that way because it takes so long to grow as a start. Um, I want to bump a couple weeks extra just to make sure that the plant's big enough to actually grow into a full crop like this. Uh because it takes a good 10 weeks for a celery plant to grow that I could plant in the ground and it'll grow as a, you know, uh, it'll actually produce a crop of celery. And I know this is going to work because I'm literally going to start harvesting this celery today for our veggie box and our market and stuff. Because some of these are, are ready. But, you know, this is kind of, I want it to be a little bit bigger, but I... This is so much that I don't want to harvest it all at once. So I'm going to start taking a little bit to harvest now, but pretty confident these will be a couple inches taller in two weeks. And that's when our first frost date is on average. And this one won't last deep into the fall like those other two, because this one doesn't do well in extreme cold. You know, celery probably can't take much colder than about 29, 28 degrees because it's so much water in it. It gets weird um the actual texture gets really weird once it's been frosted a lot even though it is technically frost tolerant you don't want to push this one too late but this is a ton of food and the cool thing about celery is you know you can harvest it at the root base and you cut it um and it will last in your fridge for a month like that because the root base is still attached you know um you know, let me actually harvest one real quick if I can. Oh, I don't have my knife with me. But um, basically what you do, actually here is what I'll do. I'm going to grab this guy and just twist him because this is the same idea. This guy's ready. And there you go. So the roots are still intact right there. 
if I stir that, in, I'm gonna soak this in water for a little bit, but if I store this in my fridge, it will last for a month at least. Celery, when it's this fresh, you know, the stuff you get at the store is a month old, at least by the time you're getting it. You know, it's old. And this has so much uh, natural preservative in it. That's why they use celery salt to preserve stuff. Um, it lasts a really, really long time. And it's just the best flavor. Um, it's one of my favorite things to eat on the farm. And it's just bursting with this rich celery flavor that you just never get from a store. So it's one of my absolute favorites. We do it as bunches, like I've shown in previous videos, but we also harvest it whole like this. And this is probably a pound and a half of celery. I want to grow them so they're two pounds, but this is big enough to sell, and I'm still going to harvest some of these today. And then in two weeks, they, they just grow so much. They grow really fast at the end of their life. You know, most of what it takes so long is just for these big solar panels to show up on the celery plant. So it takes a long time, but that's why staggering doesn't always work. You know, I planted these two weeks apart and you can't even tell the difference now because they're almost all ready at the same time. But I don't really care because I know I've got a big cold room and I could store them for a long time. But I've got um, another fall crop in my greenhouse that's almost as big as this. That was planted like three weeks after these. So um, it really grows fast at the end of its life. Uh, if you keep enough water on it, it's a really great fall crop. Um, but you just got to make sure you stick to that seeding date because there's a very short time window to plant celery in your nursery. So you got to stick to those dates and just pay attention to it. But it's a game changer. So this is again a second crop in the same bed. Okay, so what we have here is a bed of spinach that I transplanted with the paper pot transplanter. Now that's something that I use on the farm. So you're probably not using a paper pot in your garden, but the whole idea is these spinaches were started in the nursery about August 1st or something, and they're planted out as a transplant. So they're already almost halfway grown by the time I put them in the ground. So I know these will mature by September 21st into a big plant. Their roots are already established now. They're really green and healthy and they're going to be huge and a very lush crop by basically about two weeks from now. And this was followed, or this is following a crop of broccoli that I planted May 15th or something. And that broccoli crop didn't do very well, but, and I actually thought that crop was going to be ready like August 1st and it really wasn't ready until like late August. But, um, you know, that's part of the go with the flow of farming kind of deal. And I'm getting better at that every year, but I'm still kind of, you know, I get frustrated with when that happens, but um, it doesn't matter. This is why you got to just go with the flow. So I, my original plan would have been to plant uh, something like cabbage in here August 1st, but since it broccoli took so long, I just waited until it was ready, got it out of here and there should be stumps in here somewhere. Yeah, there's a stump right there. That's a broccoli stump. And then we just planted spinach and it's just as good, it's just as much food. Um, well, it's not just as much food, but it's another crop that we got in the same place. All we did was throw a little alfalfa meal down to feed this crop. So the soil is constantly getting food and the worms are constantly eating. And now we have a beautiful fall crop of spinach that I'm 90% sure will produce a beautiful crop of spinach. And the beautiful thing about spinach as a fall crop is this, well, once it's mature, I could wait till December probably to harvest this. This is the most cold hardy green out there pretty much. Um, this is a huge winter crop for us. And I know that I've harvested it through negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit in an unheated greenhouse. So it's a really bomb proof crop. So once you get this mature, you can just wait until whenever you want to eat it to harvest it. So you could grow a 10 foot section of it in your garden and just wait until you want to eat it you don't have to harvest all that whole 10 feet at once because the nice thing about this is why i love fall gardening so much is the stress for me goes down as long as the crops are mature you can harvest them whenever you want because they're not going to keep growing really after that first frost for the most part they might grow a little bit spinach might grow a little bit but the growth is pretty much done 
by that first frost date and you just harvest whenever you want. So it's basically just a backyard grocery store at that point. And as long as you get your timing right and everything. So this is a really awesome fall crop. A lot of people talk about it, but if you have it as a, a transplant, you cut your growth time down by 20 to 30 days. You know, so it's a big deal to have it as a transplant like I talked about before. So this is one of my favorites. Um, huge crop on the farm for a million different reasons, but um, you know, this is our second crop on this bed. Okay, so here we got another one of my all-time favorites, cilantro and dill. And uh, we grow a lot of this on the farm for selling at the market. It's very popular. But herbs are a great food for your garden too. You know, I we go through a bunch of cilantro once a week at my house. Um, it's very popular in, you know, Mexican food, Asian food. Um, and it's a great herb to grow because um, it's so fast. This one grows in about 40 days from seed to harvest. So we plant it on the farm every two weeks pretty much or once a week. Um, same with dill too. Basically they're about the same time. That's why I put them in the same bed, but this was another paper pot plant. Um, so we transplanted this as a start, you know, so you could kind of see the paper in here. Um, so they were about halfway grown by the time we put them in the ground and you can do the same thing at home with dill and cilantro. You just take a cell flat and throw about three or four seeds or actually probably more than that. Yeah, three or four seeds per cell uh, and dill, you know, just do a little pinch of dill seeds per cell and they take a while to germinate. They both take about the same time to germinate, you know, like a week or something. Um, it's, but it, it helps if you have fresh seed, um, but they grow really, really fast once you get them germinated. And then you could have uh, what happened here was we had our spring carrots in here uh, and then we harvested those around the first week of August and then August 12th, I had these cilantro and dill plants ready to go, threw them in the ground, and now they're almost ready to go. Um, they've taken a lot longer to grow than I hoped, but um, hopefully, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to harvest them this week. But it doesn't really matter because I just, you know, if you're doing this in your garden, you don't have to worry about the timing quite as much as I do because it's my business. But these will guaranteed be huge by September 21st, you know. Great fall crop also because these can take quite a bit of cold. Um, you'll notice everything I'm talking about in this video will last through pretty deep cold, except for celery kind of. But cilantro is very cold hardy. Cilantro is a cold weather crop. Um, it doesn't like the heat. That's why it's really valuable to me in the summertime because nobody has it in their garden. It's all bolted in their garden and gone to seed. Same with dill. So these are really good ones because you could probably harvest this two or three times and it'll regrow. Um, it, you know, it, it, you could cut the whole thing off. It'll regrow. Um, in the fall, that won't work as well because the growth is going to be very slow. But another trick you could do is you could just take the outer stalks of the plant, dill or cilantro, and it will grow a little bit faster. Um, but again, you could do a whole batch of this in your garden, another 10 foot section and just harvest it like, it's your backyard grocery store. So if you've got a whole garden full of spring crops, this is a great one to stick in there at the end of the season. And just, you know, if you had a whole bunch of starts ready to go, you could fill up a nice 10 foot space and then just harvest what you need, you know, probably into December again. This is a very cold, hard tolerant one. Dill's not as tough, um, but cilantro is really, really tough. So great herb. One of my all-time favorites, and it gets a lot sweeter as it gets colder, too. So it's a great fall crop. Ugh. Okay, now we are in the middle of my fall carrot patch. This is probably everybody's favorite fall crop. And one of the most difficult to get right, too. It's just about as hard as celery. But these are carrots, and we grow a lot of fall carrots. Um, these were seeded July 1st. In my climate, that's pretty much when you want the last date you want to harv you want to plant fall carrots to get them really big, and because because these are mostly going to be storage carrots. And there's a couple different ways you could do carrots. You know, um, I'm growing a specific variety here. It's called Bolero, um, and it's mostly going to be stored. So that's designed 
that gen the that seeds genetics is designed to store for about six months. Um, you know, I'm still kind of figuring that out myself, but uh, they store really well and we're growing them really big because the bigger the carrot, the longer it stores. There's a whole bunch of different ways you could do this. You know, carrots are a great crop because these could stay in the ground till December too. Like everything, like most of the ones I'm talking about, um, they just get better when it gets colder. Um, it's a little risky to push them that late, uh, in my climate. Cause, uh, they do, if you are wanting to store them, if they get too much frost damage on the tip, they will, not, they will rot and not, not be good, but you can still harvest them pretty deep into the winter. Um, you know, it really just depends on the weather, but I'd say I would harvest them before it gets down to like 18 degrees or something. I think last year I had a couple of nights where it got that cold and they did get a little damaged at the tips, but it still wasn't that big of a deal. They were still pretty good and I still sold them. Um, but carrots can take a lot of cold. The Once they're mature, nobody cares about the tops, right? Even if you're selling them, nobody cares. So the root is all underground. These are actually almost mature now, but I'm going to wait and just let them get huge because I want to be harvesting like four, six, four to 500 pounds of carrots um, or actually, no, it'll be like 150 to 200 pounds of carrots per bed. And we've got six beds of storage carrots. We also have some fresh carrots. That's a different variety, um, that we'll harvest and just sell as fresh bunches. But carrots just get sweeter and sweeter as the cold comes on. It's just one of my favorite things, um, is winter fall carrots because they just get like sugar sweet. Almost all the vegetables I'm talking about get better when it's cold. And once, you know, I, I was stressed about this up until I saw them germinate. And once I saw them germinate, my stress goes away. I know almost guaranteed they're going to produce a really nice crop. So the key is that timing. So July 1st, these were following bok choy. We had a spring crop of bok choy in here that we transplanted in May. Bok choy is really, really fast once you transplant it and it was ready uh, around late June, we harvested all that bok choy and then replanted with carrots. So again, two crops for the price of one. Um, you know, I actually wish I had a crop of bok choy in here because that's another great fall crop, but we didn't end up doing that. And actually bok choy is a little harder to do in the fall because the flea beetles just want to destroy it. And it's harder to get, I find in my climate, it's harder to get those kinds of crops to work as a fall crop because the pests, are much more active when you plant them than they are in the spring. But anyway, uh, fall carrots, absolute game changer. Um, you know, this bed, if you get the timing right and you get the, uh, and you get them really big, you're going to just have more carrots than you know what to do with in a tiny five to 10 foot section in your garden. You could grow 15 to 25 pounds depending on how big you let them get and which variety you pick and there's a whole rabbit hole on that And I'm gonna make another video about just carrots coming out soon, but um, Fall carrots are a game changer and if once you get really good at this timing It's two crops for the price of one <clears throat> All right, so now we are looking at our fall beets uh, another really great fall crop and they're right next to the green onions I talked about already in this video and another crop of green onions and green onions were in this bed before we planted the beets. So you can start to see, we're talking about an assembly line of food here. You know, we're constantly planting and harvesting, planting and harvesting. And when you have transplants, it makes it a lot easier to do this because direct seeding stuff takes a lot longer, especially with stuff like beets, beets, work really well as a transplant. What we did here was made sure there was a single beet seed per cell. That helps a lot with getting big beets. You don't have to do that in a garden, but it does grow faster this way. And everybody kind of likes big, nice beets. I'm pretty sure these will mature on time. I'm a little, you know, they might be a little late. Um, part of what's going on here is again, my plants are so small when I put them in the ground that they're not growing very fast. but Again, these ones you could harvest into November, no problem. They're very cold hardy, um, very hard to get damaged. And 
if you want to harvest them earlier, you could just harvest them, cut the tops off, store them in your fridge for three, six months, three, three to five months or something. You know, um, really good. They get, of course, they get sweeter as it gets colder, but they're a lot faster than most of the crops I'm talking about. When you have the right size of a plant, you're probably going to be harvesting beets in about a month. Mine are not that fast, but that's because my plants aren't as healthy as I want them to be. But you know, again, all I did was throw some alfalfa meal down on this bed. We worked it in a little bit, and then that's breaking down, feeding this crop. And we're going to be harvesting beets in about two, three weeks. I'm pretty confident of that, um, of some size. You know, and one of the things about this is, if it's, it's always gambling with farming, gardening, all this stuff. If you get lucky and you get a warm fall, our average first frost date is September 21st, but sometimes the frost doesn't happen till October 5th. And if it's warm those two weeks, they're going to keep all this stuff I'm talking about is going to get even bigger. You know, I just, you have to plan for the average because sometimes it's an early frost and that slows things down. But on average, things will keep growing until that date. And that's the best you can do with this because it is always gambling because sometimes it's worse than you think. I think this year we're looking pretty good. Um, probably not going to have a real frost until then. And, uh, you know, even if it's just a light frost, like 32 degrees, it's not going to totally stop growth if there's still some warm days. You know, you need, in my climate, you need weather that's around 80 degrees in the daytime for anything to really grow decently fast. But, um, and then, you know, not too cold at night and stuff like that. But all the crops we're talking about here are frost tolerant in some way, shape or form. And they will keep growing a little bit through that frost if, as long as it's not too heavy. So beets are a great one. So now we're in our very last field bed of lettuce of the season. This is our salad mix lettuce, but it doesn't really matter if you're growing this as a salad mix or just a head lettuce um, that you're going to harvest the whole head. But we um, are going to use this as salad mix. And this bed of lettuce was planted after a spring bed of carrots. So uh, right around mid-August or something, we pulled the carrots or first week in August and we replanted with lettuce plants that we started about a month earlier. And that's it's how you guarantee they're going to be ready. These grew really, really slow. Um, again, mostly because the plants are too small when I'm putting them in um, for me. But in, if you grow them at home, they're going to be bigger, most likely, if you're growing them in your living room, like I teach in the course. But, you know, this is a truckload of lettuce. You obviously aren't going to need this in your garden, but it's another great fall crop. It does well in the cold. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't like it too much colder than like 28 it could take some frost but it's not a super tough one like spinach uh but it's a good one to have and you know everybody likes lettuce what you know lettuce goes good on sandwiches tacos everything so um you could pretty much grow lettuce through the year most climates well in the south that's a whole different story i can't speak for the south but in the north you should be able to grow it through the summer but, you know, if you like lettuce uh, as a gardener, it, it doesn't hurt to seed it all the time in your nursery. You know, every two weeks, we, we seed this kind of lettuce basically every, t about every two weeks uh, or, or every week, depending on what's going on. Um, just so we have a constant supply. Uh, you don't have to do that necessarily with your garden, but, you know, you're probably not going to regret having too many lettuce plants and the seed is very cheap for the most part um, on lettuce. So just throw some seeds in a, in a pot every couple weeks and you'll have a constant supply. When you have an opening, just throw the plants in. So, you know, I'm probably getting, it's probably getting boring you hearing me say that, but that's literally how simple it is. You know, once you see a little opening, throw some plants in and, you know, don't worry about, if it's a companion plant or not, it's going to grow and turn into food for you. So um, lettuce is another great one. You, you, you know, you just got to make sure you're paying attention to that seed starting date and then you should be fine. So lettuce is a good one. Okay, so now we are in our arugula bed that was that is following a bed of shallots, which is a huge success for me because I've never been able to grow a second crop after something like shallots. 
but this is a great one to fit in when you don't have much time left in your growing season because this is 21 days seed to harvest and we seeded this September 3rd so about a week ago and we should have I'm hoping that it'll mature um, but if you could fit another crop in after something like shallots or onions, you're really doing well because that's a huge yield on that first crop, but those take so long to grow. Um, you know, shallots and onions are 100 to 120 days from plants to harvest, so that's not seed to harvest. Um, and this year we actually had healthy enough plants where that worked really well, so I'm so excited about this one. But Arugula and stuff like Tokyo Bacana, those are really fast growing greens that can go deep into the fall. These can take cold down to like 25 degrees pretty well. Um, and you could just have a huge amount of this in your garden and harvest it when you need it. It's a great flavor for sandwiches or throwing in like a potato salad or something. It's a really spicy green. I've been obsessed with putting it on sandwiches this year. Um, and it does really well in the fall again because the flea beetles aren't that bad. You know, these leaves, I don't know if you could see them on the camera, but there's no holes in them. And I don't have insect netting on this part. So there is flea beetles here. I could see them, but there's not as many because when there's a truckload of flea beetles, it just doesn't work that well. The plants don't grow very well. Um, same thing with radishes, you know. So this is a gr all of these kinds of brassicas, when you can plant them and still get a crop this late into the fall, they work really, really well. You know, some of them you take too long to grow to make that work, but arugula is so fast, it works almost every time. So got to try arugula. It's a game changer, and um, it's almost guaranteed you're going to get two crops in the same space with arugula. So got to try it. So those are nine crops that you can fit in the second half of your season, but there's tons more. Um, I just picked the nine that we kind of have lying around the farm that are easy to explain. Um, but those are just examples of how you can get two crops for the price of one. And if you get good at that concept, you can start to grow a lot more food in a very small space. And it's the same strategy we use on this farm to grow $100,000 worth of food on a half an acre of growing space. So this is such a game changer concept that um, I don't see enough people doing yet. Um, you know, because I see a lot of people just get really excited in the spring and then their motivation just goes down the toilet by 4th of July and they got a big garden full of weeds and stuff. But if you just set up your garden like I talk about in the garden course and don't have to deal with weeds. All you have to worry about is planting on the right dates. And then your life becomes really easy. You can pretty much forget about stuff. You know, you could set up, you literally set up your garden. So you have a water timer. It waters twice a week and you only have to go out there to harvest. That's literally how easy it can be with the garden course. So if you're interested in setting up a garden where all of that is possible, I highly recommend you check out my garden course at the link in the description. It's seven hours of content, me explaining how to set up a no-dig garden with cardboard and six inches of compost and wood chips, plus all of the planting techniques that I use on the farm, and most importantly, how to plan it out in the spring, including watering techniques, weeding techniques when you do have to weed, all sorts of stuff. Everything you need to know from seed to harvest to grow tons of food in your backyard. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe and like it and share with people you know that might find it interesting. And if you enjoyed that, I will see you in the next one.